Hi folks! In this video we're going to do what we really set out to do in Chapter 3, which is to finally solve and graph higher order polynomials. Uh, and to just get us into the swing of it, let's solve some simple equations here. This first one's a quadratic, so I would factor it. Uh, what adds to 1 and multiplies to negative 6, that would be 3 and negative 2. Okay, and then the solutions are whatever makes these brackets 0. So negative 3 would make this first bracket 0, and 2 would make this bracket 0. If you really wanted to get really picky about it, you could say, I wonder what makes x plus 3 equal to 0. Oh, it's negative 3, so that's one of the solutions. And I wonder what makes x minus 2 equal to 0. Oh, it's 2. There are two solutions. Okay. And the reason that that works is once you're in factored form and it's equal to 0, then if any one of those brackets are 0, the whole thing is 0. That means that it's balanced. So this is a big idea that we can use this uh, zero product rule or the idea that the only way to multiply to 0 is to have a 0. Uh, to help us with some of these factorized equations. So what if I had something like this? I mean, I could FOIL it out, and then I could factor it, but right now it's a gift. It's in factored form. So we actually, from factored form, we know the answers. They're going to be x is 2, and x is negative 3, the things that zero out those brackets. If we have higher order questions, or if we have ones that, you know, sometimes aren't even polynomials, the same principle still applies. Whatever numbers make each of these brackets 0, if you're in factored form and the other side is 0, whatever numbers make the bracket 0 are the solutions. So a cubic is not really any harder than a quadratic once it's factored. It's going to have these three solutions, ta-da, and we're done. So as long as we get it to factored form, it should be pretty easy to find the solutions. The other thing we'll look at here is graphing, and I'm just going to refresh your memory on the polynomial dance. I can't do it here on the screencast, but I've done it in class, and, and I think it is on one of the uh, video lessons from this section. Um, but the idea was, if you have an odd degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient, then you're going to go, as we read from left to right, you're going to go from down to up. If it's odd degree and negative leading coefficient, it goes from up, and it terminates down. If we have even, then it's kind of parabolic in nature. It either goes up to up or down to down. So if it's even and positive leading coefficient, up to up. Okay. And if we are reading a negative uh, even degree, then it's down to down in the end. Just like uh, if you had y equals negative x squared, something like that, that would go from down to down. Okay, so now we're ready to graph, I think. When we graph polynomials, here are going to be our steps. And you might want to take a second and pause and copy these down. You want to check if it's an even or odd degree and figure out whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. Basically, you want to do the dance. Now, if a polynomial is given to you in like this form, where it's expanded, it's easy to pick out the degree. The degree of that polynomial is 3. It's an x cubed is its biggest term, and that one happens to have a positive leading coefficient. If, on the other hand, they're given to you in factored form, you have to do a little thinking here. You have to say, well, if I had had I don't know, let's take the one that we had from before. This. How would I figure out that that's a cubic? Well, essentially, if you, you could FOIL it all out, right? And it would be a huge pain. Um, you'd have a whole bunch of multiplication to do. You'd have to put together some terms. But the degree is just going to come from basically x in this bracket times there's an x in this bracket times an x in this bracket. So the highest degree is going to be 3, or a cubed. So you'll have to multiply through your x's if it's given to you in factored form. You can find the y-intercept. Uh, to find a y-intercept in any function, you sub 0 for x. And then we factor, and we find the x-intercepts. So that's been sort of the whole crux of the chapter, is to be able to do that. And 
finally plot the points and connect smoothly. And we're going to watch out for repeated roots, uh, which we'll deal with in a second. But let's just take this first one to begin with. Let's look at this. We've got to d decide whether it's even or odd degree. So its degree is going to be x times x times x, or degree, we would have an x cubed. So degree is 3, which is odd. I can see that it has a, a leading coefficient of just 1. There's just a secret 1 out front here, so it's got a positive leading coefficient. And at this point, I do my little dance. I say degree is odd and positive. Oh, that's one that does this kind of shape. Now, I'm not committing to how many turning points it has. I'm just saying it goes from down to up. We're going to find the y-intercept. That's our next step. So sub 0 for x. And at any point, you can pause the video if you need to catch up, or if you want to work ahead and check your work. So if I put 0 in for x, I'd have 0 minus 4 by 0 plus 2 by 0 minus 2. Or in other words, I'd have negative 4 times 2 times negative 2. I've got a y-intercept of 16. Okay, so there's my y-intercept. And my x-intercepts, I mean, I could foil this whole thing out and then factor it again, but it's given to me in factored form. So the x-intercepts come from the numbers that make each of the brackets 0. I'm just going to write the function again here. x minus 4, x plus 2, x minus 2. So you're going to have x-intercepts at 4, at negative 2, and at 2, the numbers that zero out each of those brackets. And honestly, that's probably enough for us to be able to graph this. So I'm just going to make some axes here. And I know I've got an x-intercept at 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got an x-intercept at 2. And I've got an x-intercept at negative 2. And I know it starts from down low, and it ends up going high. And all I'm going to do here is just kind of thread the needle through those points. Now, where exactly the maximum or the turning point happens, we don't know. We're going to need calculus to figure that out. So that'll have to wait a little bit. But this is a really good look at the graph of this function. Now, the only thing I haven't shown is the y-intercept. And I just wait uh, till I've drawn it, and then I say, oh, it's 16. The other ones I can pick off from tick marks. And now we've got a graph of that cubic function. So finally, we're able to graph these. If you feel comfortable, maybe you just want to try the next one, and then unpause, and uh, sorry, pause, and, and then press play, and, and see how it turns out. If not, here we go. So this next one has x times x times x times x. Oh, that's an x to the 4. So if I were to FOIL this whole thing out, I'd have a whole bunch of terms, but the highest one would be an x4. So that means the degree of the polynomial is 4, which is even. And the leading coefficient is right here. It's this negative 2. So it's got a negative leading coefficient. If we do the dance, degree is odd, degree is even. It's the last one. It's like a parabola that points down. It's going to go from down to down. Okay, we can go and check that out over here. That's our cheat sheet. Or we can just dance it out. Uh, so I know the basic shape now. I'll go ahead and find that y-intercept by subbing in 0 for x. And, and I recommend that you actually take the time to go through it. Don't just assume that you won't make a goof. Uh, 0 minus 1, 0 minus 3. Honestly, I'd just be skipping right to this stage here. Negative 2 times 3 times 5 times negative 1 times negative 3. Okay, when I look at that, I know there are three negatives multiplied together. So the answer is going to be negative. Now, what will it be? It's going to be 2 times 3 is 6, times 5 is 30, times 3 is 90. So there's my y-intercept. x-intercepts. 
Okay, I can pull them out of each bracket. What number zero is at this first bracket? Negative three. In this bracket, negative five. In this bracket, one. In this bracket, three. Now I know all I need to know to be able to generate the graph. So here we go. Uh, some tick marks, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And this has the basic shape of down to down. So I might just put those there to help myself. And I'm just going to thread the needle through them. I don't know where exactly the minimum is. Uh, polynomials are smooth functions, though. So don't put any jagged edges in them. That's why I'm using just little, little sort of brush strokes here. And it goes from down to down. I want to show that my y-intercept is at negative 90. And that's a good sketch of the graph. If you took a look at it on Desmos, maybe its max and min would be a little higher or lower. Uh, maybe we'd end up with a different kind of spot for the turning point. But these features would be on there, and they'd be correct. The overall look would be fine. The next thing we've got to figure out for graphing, and really the last thing for graphing, is what about if you had one of these factors that's squared? Okay. Or what if you had one of these factors that's cubed? Something like this or maybe even to the power of four. And to do that, we'll take a look at Desmos for a second. And here's the graph of one of those. We've got the x plus one all squared by x minus two. You can see at two, it just passes through the x-axis. But something weird happens at x plus one or at negative one. It bounces off the axis or it has a turning point on the axis. So that's kind of weird. Uh, I wonder what happens if we have a power of 3 on that particular one. Okay, so now at x equals negative 1, we've got that sort of Travolta shape, which we can call a change in concavity. I like to call it a hesitation. It looks like it's going to turn around, and then at the last minute, it does the opposite. It just keeps going through, but it changes whether it's sort of facing upward or downward. So we might want to investigate further. Well, what happens if you have a power of four? Oh, we get another one of these turning points. Okay, it's a little more pronounced. Power of five? No, oh, we get another one of these Travoltas. Power of six, turning point. Power of seven, another one of these Travoltas. They're getting increasingly sort of flat around the point, but they have the same basic characteristics. And so you can predict, what do you think is gonna happen at 100? There's a bounce. It looks like it's straight edges here, but if we went close enough into the axis, you'd see that it's actually very smooth. If we went 101, it's going to be another one of these um, sort of hesitation or Travolta looking things. So here we go. Multiplicity of roots. If a binomial factor appears in the form x minus a where they've got a power on it, a power that you could see, and if there's no power that you can see, the power is just 1. Then we have a, what we call a repeated root. And if that power over here, if it's even, then we have a turning point, or what I would call a bounce at that x-intercept or that root. We should call them x-intercepts, that x-intercept. Okay, so it might be upward, or it might be bouncing downward off the axis. If n is odd, so again, that's just this power here, then we don't have a turning point, but we have a change in concavity, which looks like a Travolta. Or like this. Sorry, that should be popping up. That should just be going to turn around, and then it just doesn't. Okay, so we've seen that in cubic functions. We'll have that at the x-intercept. Some people call that a saddle. Uh, I like to call it a hesitation. Like it's going to go through, but then it almost changes its mind. Hesitation. The real name for it would be a uh, point of inflection. 
and it would happen to be a horizontal one, but we'll deal with that more in calculus. You can call it any of those things. So here we go. We're going to sketch this. We're going to use the same basic steps. I do have to watch out here, though. This bracket here basically means there's an x squared, because this function really is x minus 3 by x minus 3 by x plus 2. So of course its degree is going to be x by x by x, or it's going to be a cubic. Okay, I can figure that out by thinking of that first one as representing an x squared, then this one having a highest power of x. Oh my gosh, that would give us an x cubed. So I can say that the degree is 3, which is odd. And again, there's nothing out front, so it's got a secret 1 as its coefficient. It's got a positive leading coefficient. So its basic look is the start of the polynomial dance, this kind of thing. OK, uh, what else do we have to figure out? We want to figure out the y-intercept. It's going to be put in 0 for x, so that would be 0 minus 3, all squared, by 0 plus 2. Be careful as you do this. Negative 3 squared is 9 times 2 gives us 18. There's our y-intercept. Okay, we also want our x-intercepts. And they're easy to pick out. x minus 3, oh, that's an x-intercept of 3. x plus 2, it's an x-intercept of negative 2. And I want to make note here, this x minus 3 one, this one right here, it has a multiplicity, right? It's squared. That means n is even. Okay, so it's been squared because it's got a positive power or an even power on it. There's going to be a bounce here at that one. Okay, now actually graphing it is not going to be that bad. I want to say that there's an x-intercept at three. Uh, there's an x-intercept at negative two. I know it starts low and goes high. And I'm just going to try and thread the needle. So there's nothing special about the x-intercept at negative 2. It just passes through. At 3, however, it needs to bounce off the axis. And again, I think doing these little sort of fine brush strokes is going to make it easier for you to graph it. And that should be the overall look. There's a y-intercept at positive 18. And, and there we go. There's the graph. You can check it out on Desmos. It'll be pretty similar. We'll do one more, but if you're feeling comfortable with this, maybe you just want to pause and try it yourself. All right, analyzing this one, we've basically got an x squared times an x cubed. That would give us x5 as our highest degree. So the degree is 5, which again is odd. This one clearly has a negative leading coefficient. So its overall look is going to be something like this, from up to down. We can find its y-intercept without too much hassle. y equals negative 2 times 0 plus 3 squared, 0 minus 1 cubed. Or negative 2 times 9 times negative 1. Or, again, the same y-intercept, just coincidentally, of 18. Okay. Uh, oh, I got ahead of myself. I wanted to graph, but I have not yet. I have not yet found the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts come from this first bracket, this one at negative 3, and this bracket at 1. This one has an even power, so it's a bounce. This one has an odd power, so it's a hesitation slash travolta slash shadow, uh, sh uh, saddle rather. Hesitation, travolta, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to worry too much about which way this all faces until I have my graph ready to go. So at negative 3 and at positive 1, that's where the magic's happening on this graph. Because our x intercepts. Uh, it starts from high, just using right here this uh, this sketch of the basic shape. 
and it goes down low. Okay, let's see if we can do this. At negative 3, there is a bounce. No big deal. Bounce off the x-axis. At 1, there's the hesitation. And here's how I think you should draw the hesitation. You should make it prepare for a bounce. Okay. So if I looked at that, I'd think, oh, it's probably going to bounce off again. And then at the last second, you should just have it go through. Almost like you're doing half of a parabola facing one way and half of a parabola facing the other way. That's what it looks like. Here's our y-intercept, and we've got the basic shape of the graph. In terms of practice for this stuff, there's a practice sheet that is in the video description and should also be on Google Classroom. Um, and you can also do pages 147 to 9, uh, numbers 1 and 4. But for 4, just do parts 1 and 3. Uh, the main thing is to do that graphing sheet, though. And please note that the answers are upside down on the graphing practice sheet. Um, and that would have made more sense if you had a physical copy of it, though it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so do the questions their right way up, and then, I guess, maybe invert your tablet or your phone to, uh, to see the answers nicely. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, good luck with the material, folks, and take care.